Welcome to Active Measures. Um, I'm joined today by Ndongo Sambasila. Um, he is uh, an academic at that Senegal's International Development Economics Associates, IDEAS, um, a, quite, quite a smart acronym, um, befitting of a very smart guy. Now, a few weeks back on Active Measures, Alex and myself, we discussed uh, Ndongo's recent paper, The Crisis of French Imperialism, uh, debating military coups in Africa. Um, it's a stunning piece of work. It challenges a lot of mainstream Western assumptions. Uh, it is teeming with fascinating inf in, in information that you won't find in many other um, English language sources. Um, and uh, yeah, it's free, it's open source and free to read. So I, I strongly encourage our viewers to um, to, to uh, give it a read. Um, it's it's not long and it's uh, it's worth the wait, um, <laughs> as it were, getting to the end. So welcome to the show, Nodongo. How are you doing? Uh, thank you for the invitation. I'm well. Thank you very much for having me. No, that's excellent to hear. No, it's 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 our pleasure. Active measures. So yes, um, just as uh, by way of introduction, um, since uh, 2020, there has been a spate of military coups in um, in uh, across Africa, particularly in um, uh, the, the former French or or is it former French imperial and colonial sphere um, on the continent, and this has precipitated a welter of condemnation and lamentation in the Western media and from, from Western officials about um, uh, democratic backsliding and a return to the, the dark days of the Cold War where you know, warlords were um, uh, overthrowing one another uh, across Africa um, on, on, on a weekly basis. Um, Ndongo's paper makes very, very clear that this view is not only completely wrong, um, but actually um, quite offensive um, an imperialist in itself. So perhaps you could explain why that is. Yeah, th th thank you very much for, for this question. In fact, as you said, since 2020, there had been nine successful coups. And when we say successful, it's not a moral judgment. It's just a way of saying that, well, some people attempted a coup and they were successful in the sense that they overthrew the, the government. So successful mm. means that. And there have been nine coups across Africa. And these coups have been, you know, interpreted, uh, condemned uh, in the Western media, saying that, oh, uh, there is a kind of a return of coups, that that has been the language, return of coups. And there were even some media speculating that, oh, uh, at this rate, we will have, you know, more coups than, for example, in the 1960s, I mean, the decade where, you know, we have the most coups, successful coups in Africa. And in that paper published by the Review of African Political Economy, I try to challenge this kind of view and interpretation because there is no such a thing as a return of coups in, in Africa. In fact, uh, after the end of the Cold War, let's say, uh, I mean, from the end of the 1990s, most African countries, you know, have, you know, turned, uh, you know, uh, their back to the, to the coups, to the military coups. It doesn't mean that these countries have become more democratic or things like that. It's just that, you know, the states have become more resilient to military coups. And in fact, military coups have been happening mostly in Francophone countries. And this is not uh, something new because the Francophone countries, French speaking countries in Africa have historically been, I mean, since the 1960, the world champions in terms of coups. They are overrepresented. <laughs> In military coups. So there is no return of coups. There is a particular problem of uh, Francophone countries. And since 2020, there have been nine military coups, and eight of them happened in Francophone countries. I mean, the mm -hmm. countries in the Sahel, uh, Mali, Burkina, Niger, Chad, and you have Guinea, mm -hmm. and Gabon. So the only coup that did not happen, I mean, uh, since 2020 in the Francophone countries is Sudan, you see. But uh, yeah. there's also something common between Sudan and the Syrian countries. And the, the, the thing that is common to them is Western imperialism. Because, I mean, uh, I mean in the, since, since the destruction, invasion of uh, Libya by the NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the United States, the uh, UK, and France, in fact, there have been 19, I mean, since 2011, 2012, yeah. there have been 19 successful coups in Africa, across Africa, and 15 of them happened in North Africa and in the Sahel. Yeah, 
Indeed. I mean, I think that, yes, I mean, I, I've read academic research which shows that in between 1960 and 2020, France launched 50 overt um, interventions in Africa to um, get rid of troublesome governments or protect their, their chosen puppets. Um, and of course, figures for clandestine activities during this time aren't, aren't available. But France fingerprints are all over you know, endless rigged elections, coups, assassinations um, that have sustained com compliant and often it, it deeply corrupt and illiberal governments in power throughout the continent. So, I mean, yes, it is it is a bit reach, um, to say the least, to hear this um, this uh, uh, condemnatory rhetoric. I believe that um, there was a, a, a UN official spoke of an epidemic of putches, um, and by that yes. they, of course, mean an epidemic of the wrong kind of putches, because as you document in your paper, frequently, or, well, I mean, at least in some cases since 2020, um, the governments, the, 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 the military hunters, as the West would have it, who have have seized power um, are more representative of their population's wishes and interests than the quote unquote democratic governments they replaced. Are you, um, perhaps you could uh, discuss that a bit further. Yeah, in in fact, there's a um, book I co-authored with my friend uh, called for Fanny Pigeot. Uh, she's a French journalist, and in that book uh, we surveyed you know the history of elections from the French Revolution to now. I mean, in, in, in the Francophone, I mean, the, in the territories that have been colonized by France in the Caribbean and also in Africa. And we introduced this concept of imperial right. In, in fact, uh, um, uh, imperial right, in fact, it's a, it's a concept we took from the political scientist, uh, James Tully. In fact, France has always asserted its imperial right. Uh, and uh, that means the right of France who uh, determine who should rule in the colonies uh, or uh, f former colonies mm. in Africa, you know. Mm. So uh, since uh, 1960 to now, uh, there is no record of any, uh, you know, progressive leader that came to power through normal elections. The only exception has been, you know, uh, the Senegal, the newly elected uh, Senegalese. President Pastor Jomai Faye in uh, March uh, this year, you know, but except for that, since 1960 to now, in fact, you had, uh, I mean, uh, regimes, uh, odious regimes uh, backed by France. You have uh, leaders who are supposed to be uh, democratically elected, but often elections have been rigged, etc. So historically speaking, the only challenge you had from the French imperialism uh, came from the military due, you know, to the strong uh, hand of France, uh, you know, in African political and economic affairs. For example, um, in the Congo, uh, in the 90, end of 1960, mid, uh, mid 1970s, you had Mayan Guabi, for example. He was uh, from the military, a captain, and he was opposed to France, um, uh, French uh, colonial, neocolonialism. Uh, you had also Thomas Sankara, you know, he's, um, I mean, one of the most known, I mean, political figures in Africa, especially Francophone Africa between 1983 and 1987. But all these people who were uh, uh, against uh, French imperialism, they have been removed from power and killed, you see. Uh, but this is the first time, I mean, since mm -hmm. 2020, that you have uh, in the side in Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso, three military uh, regimes. Uh, which are anti-imperialist and which are also, which enjoys a measure of popular support. And you could yes. see that, you know, through, through, you know, opinion surveys. In my paper, I got it an opinion survey, uh, you know, mm -hmm. performed by um, a, a German foundation. And this, yes. I mean, opinion surveys goes against all the propaganda against this uh, military regime because they show that the people have trust in these regimes and they have seen some improvement, you know, uh, you know, since these people come to rule, despite the many challenges that these countries face, because these are landlocked countries and they have very mm. few resources. So that means that uh, sometimes, you know, the only way uh, you mm. could get rid of, you know, aspects of French neocolonialism has been through progressive military leaders. For example, no one would have ever expected that in a matter of months, uh, any so-called democratic regime would have been able to get rid of French military troops in the Sahel. No one would have, yeah. except me. 
but with the major regimes. And this has been, you know, a strong popular demand. And people have been, you know, mobilizing against French troops in the Sahel. But so-called yeah. democratic, uh, democratically elected leaders, they never, uh, I mean, cared about, you know, the demands for coming from their people, the so so sovereignty demands coming from their people. But this is not the case with the military. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, there's been some quite remarkable scenes um, in yes, the, the, the in francophone uh, West Africa, as it's rather patronisingly known. Um, I mean, in January 2022, um, there there was a huge pro-government, kind of pro-military government protest um, uh, in response to an organisation known as ECOVAS um, imposing strict sanctions on Mali. Um, and uh, there have been other efforts since then to purge for malign foreign influence from former colonial powers, you know, the banning of French media, which is you know, slammed by the UN, but cheered by average uh, Malians, uh, you know. So, I mean, could you tell us a bit more about ECOVAS and how, uh, uh, what role that plays in um, uh, maintaining French hegemony in parts of Africa, but also um, uh, I I impoverishing um, residents of the region? Yes, uh, thanks for, for this question. ECOWAS is the Economic Committee of West African States. Mm. It gathers uh, 15 countries in West Africa, uh, uh, eight countries using the CFA franc, which is a colonial currency still, you know, yes. controlled by the French Treasury, and seven others like uh, Nigeria, Ghana, you know, Liberia, Sierra mm. Leone, Guinea, you know, Cabo Verde, etc. Yes. You see. Uh, Mauritania is not part of ECOWAS. When ECOWAS was created, I mean, most of the leaders at the time who created ECOWAS were, were from the military. And that is the irony of the thing, because the yeah. three countries, Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso, now they, they um, exited from, from, from ECOWAS. But ECOWAS recently, I mean, in the past years, uh, has been captured by, you know, Western nations, France and generally Western nations. And you could see that in, in the sanctions they, they, they imposed on, for example, on Mali, Mali and Guinea in January 2022. I have observed precisely these sanctions because you see, uh, in, it, it was a mix of uh, commercial sanctions, you know, uh, financial sanctions and some sanctions, you know, re restructuring, you know, the traveling options of, you know, the, I mean, uh, the, I mean, people from the military, et cetera, you know. But, you know, in their financial sanction, they said that the assets uh, of these countries in the regional financial institutions, they would be frozen. They, they put it like that, you know, in their statement mm. in January. And in the case of Mali, this led the central bank issuing the CFA franc in West Africa to freeze you know, uh, I mean, Malian assets. And even it's not only freezing, it's in fact, the central bank deprived the Malian government access to its own bank accounts. And the central bank also stopped refinancing the uh, Malian banking system. And this was totally illegal because the central bank does not have this power. And uh, normally the older, you know, the, the monetary union treaties existing do not allow for such kind of things. And the uh, central bank is normally independent uh, from the states and is normally have no, you know, link internally whatsoever with ECOWAS. But they, they did that. So the Malian government did not have access to its own bank accounts. And they tried to sabotage, you know, the domestic, uh, uh, I mean, banking system in, in Mali. But in the case of Guinea, this was not possible because Guinea, has its own national currency, even if it's a weak currency, etc. Uh, ECOWAS could not say to the, I mean, uh, governor of the Guinean Central Bank, you have to deprive the governor of, of, of its access to its own bank accounts, which was not possible. Mm -hmm. But in the case of Mali, it was possible because Mali uses the CFA franc, and the CFA franc is a currency controlled by the French Treasury. So when ECOWAS yes. decided that, you could clearly see the hand of French neocolonialism, you see. But most of the people, they will say, oh, these are ECOWAS sanctions. No, these are imperialist sanctions. And they did it again, you know, in Niger when they had this coup uh, during the summer mm. 2023. Before in 2011, 2012, they did it, they, they, they did, did it against Laurent Bagbo because they sided with 
uh, Alassane Ouattara, who is the current president of um, of Cote d'Ivoire, and he was re-elected in 2020 with more than 95 percent of the votes in the first round. You see, so you know, uh, ECOWAS has completely discredited itself when yes. it decided to be under you know Western agenda. And when you know, you could say I am against schools. I could accept that. I could understand that. But your first option could not be going to war with your neighbor because it's the same people. I mean, colonialism yes. has drawn, you know, artificial borders, but you have the same people in Niger and Nigeria. How would you wage war against Niger? Yes. But that was their Indeed. first option. Yeah. Yes. Well, so, I mean, it's they were they were terrified. It was we we were terrifyingly close to a um, an, an overt military intervention um, last year um, by <clears throat> led by. Uh, Bola Tanubu, um, of course, a a former yeah. uh, money launderer for Chicago heroin barons, and you know now um, Nigerian president and chair of uh, ECOWAS. But I think to just really, just really quickly, I think just for the, the benefit of our viewers who may not be aware, the CFA Frank, which uh, Nadongo is, is is discussing, I mean, this is quite extraordinary that this exists, and mo many people don't know. Um, uh, 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 about uh, it at all. Now, the C the the the, the, the CFA Frank. It is, yeah, it was created in 1945 um, by the, the, the then rapidly unraveling French Empire. And it was intended to effectively keep former, quote unquote, former French colon, uh, colonies and imperial holdings in Africa under France's, uh, sorry, under French political and economic control. And it effectively, um, it, 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 it prevents these countries from exporting uh, very much other than raw resources to anywhere particularly other than Europe, in particular France. Um, it's 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 pegged to the euro still, I believe. Um, yes. And yeah, and, and it means that these countries can trade with very f few um, other nation, uh, nations outside Europe. Um, you know, it, it, and then, of course, once you, as we saw in Greece, say, following the financial crisis where the IMF and the World Bank and the EU and, and also major financial institutions like Goldman Sachs and BlackRock um, moved in for the kill, um, uh, you know, the the, the these countries are effectively, in many ways, these allegedly, um, even whether they are ruled by military dictatorships, quote unquote, or democratically elected governments, quote unquote, powerless to enact very much in the way of meaningful policy changes, because they don't control their own monetary policy. And as Ndongo says, this can be um, uh, the 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 the, the, the uh, or, or or the French um, can move to harshly punish governments and countries that step out of line. Um, and so, but yeah, you have mentioned you you, you mentioned at the end of um, uh, at the end of your comments just now that this has it's very much the the the, the events of like yeah last last summer where Ecovas was on the verge of, of overt military intervention um, in in Niger um, that has rebounded on Ecovas's regional credibility um, and not only that it seems to have forced the target of French ire which is to say. Mali, um, Niger, and Burkina Faso closer together into a dedicated union. Um, perhaps you could tell us more about that, Nadongo. Yeah, in fact, uh, when um, ECOWAS decided to go to war, in fact, had this intent to go to war to reinstate Mohamed Bazoum. <coughs> Mohamed Bazoum was the uh, overthrown president in Niger. And he, hmm. Bazoum was a really, I mean, a French ally, Western ally. And he uh, accepted all these harsh migratory measures against African populations, you know, even, you know, um, uh, going against, you know, the free circulation that is uh, one of the pillar, you know, of, 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 of ECOWAS. And one, you know, because, you know, the, the French was surprised by medicals. And uh, in Niger, Macron said, it's uh, one call too much. So we could not accept that. So we have to intervene. Mm -hmm. And ECOWAS's first option was to go to war, uh, you know, against this, against Niger. Mm -hmm. But uh, Mali uh, stand in um, solidarity, Burkina as well, Guinea as well. They said, if you attack them, you attack us. And this way the state. Yes. And all the mm. populations, I mean, the, I mean, you could see the divide between the population and the ruling classes. African populations were against, you know, this uh, war that would be devastating. You know, you just have to think about how, you know, NATO destroyed Libya to, you know, to have an idea of what would have been, you know, the scale. I mean, it would have been uh, creating a paradise for, you know, the jihadist groups, 
you see. Mm -hmm. And uh, at one point, you know, even ECOWAS did not have the money because they expected the money from France and the West. And the Nigerian Senate say, oh, no, 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 we have too many things to handle. So we are opposed to this war. So uh, at one point, you know, these countries knew that they have to be together to survive in this very difficult environment where you have hostile neighbors, where you have, uh, you know, uh, uh, embryism from the West and you have, you know, the jihadist groups and the separatist group that are destabilizing them. So they said, oh, we are going to have a confederation called in French, uh, Alliance is that style, Alliance of the Silent States. And I mm -hmm. think it was a brilliant move for them because uh, it was, uh, I mean, one, one of the objectives was to say, oh, now we are no longer part of ECOWAS, so nothing could come from ECOWAS because we are no longer part of ECOWAS. And ECOWAS could no longer oblige us to, I mean, so-called give a roadmap to civilian transition. Because, you know, in, uh, in contrast to Senegal, in Senegal, we don't have a military coup, but uh, we managed to have uh, someone from the opposition, you know, elected through, you know, normal ways, etc. Because we have a credible, uh, you know, leadership in the opposition. You don't have that in the cell. In the cell, all the political class generally, you know, they are puppets of the West. And that's why, you know, they have been, you know, uh, tolerating, I mean, all this foreign military occupation, et cetera, this, this yeah. kind of things. And so for, for these countries, it was, uh, it is a strategic move to be together because that's the only way they could survive. And I think it was a really uh, brilliant move. And now, uh, now they will first challenge, you know, ECOWAS in the sense that, you know, ECOWAS had this project of a single currency for the region, for the 15 countries. But in mm -hmm. fact, even France tried to hijack that in 2019, Macron tried to hijack that saying that, oh, Let's leave Nigeria aside and let the other countries be part of this kind of reform CFA, CFA friend zone. But now these countries say, oh, we, we don't like the CFA and we don't like ECOWAS. But, you know, we have nothing against our neighbors, but we don't like the organization. So we have to cooperate differently. So this is a huge blow to, 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 to ECOWAS. Hmm. Absolutely. And I think that, <clears throat> I mean, some of the the, uh, the 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 most interesting um, passages um, in, in in your paper, from my perspective, they were they were uh, referred to um, how there is growing uh, Chinese and Russian um, economic and political influence in Africa, um, and how this has been a greeted, um, which is to say, not very warmly, by um, European by European former colonial powers, um, but also yes, the, um, it, 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 the 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 hypocrisy of framing um, Chinese and Russian uh, um, uh, influence within the region, which is often tied up with trade and investment, um, um, as uh, some form of dastardly devilish imperialism, and it's the same people who are absolutely silent on um, enduring French and indeed British and American imperialism in Africa, who are harshly condemning China and Russia's role. Um, France seems particularly concerned about this. And there is a, a great quote in your paper, which I um, read out in full on our uh, on our Active Measures broadcast, and I will I will repeat it now because I just think it's so astonishing. Uh, General Le Contra, uh, a former French army chief of staff, declared during an interview in mid April 2024, what we Europeans have in common is the Mediterranean and Africa, where our destiny is at stake. Europe has an obligation to return to Africa to help restore the state and bring back administration and development. It's not China, Russia or Wagner Group, that is the, to say the, the Russian mercenary outfit, which has now been disbanded, who are going to provide lasting solutions to the very great difficulties facing these African countries and their people, which is to say, <clears throat> A um, the, the French see Europe, which has impoverished, underdeveloped and raped and pillaged its way across Africa for centuries as Africa's saviour, not China and Russia for building infrastructure um, <laughs> and, 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 inve and, and uh, uh, inve in, in, in investing in uh, these, these economies. So could you yeah, tell, tell, tell us more about this? Well, you know, there's... Um... You know, Mitterrand, Mitterrand, the former president Mitterrand, uh, François Mitterrand, I mean, he's a portrayed as someone from the left. But when it comes to Africa, uh, I mean, from the perspective of the French ruling class, there is no left. 
Africa is, it will still be viewed as a territory to be colonized, to be subjected to French domination, you know, for French power, French grandeur, as uh, the world used to say. He wrote a book and, and he said in 1957 in that book, without Africa, there will be no future for France in the 21st century. That's what they believe. So even if the African people say we don't no longer want uh, French troops, uh, we don't no, no longer want uh, French neocolonialism, the Shaving Frank, all these kind of things, you will still see uh, people like this General Lequin saying that, oh, we have been boosted uh, uh, from Africa by African people themselves, but we'll come back because we could not let Africa with China or Russia. But China and Russia have a different record in Africa. They are not perceived by the intellectuals, by the African people as colonizers. They don't have these liabilities, you know. French, the French, the, the US, to some extent, the UK, extent, they have this record because what they have been doing, the military interventions, how they destroyed Libya, this is fresh in people's mind. They know that. But that's not the case with China and Libya. And the one of the interesting thing is that, you know, the US aid uh, published a report on called disinformation trends in Niger. And in that report, they said, we have no evidence that there is a propaganda led by the Chinese in, in Niger. There's none, you see. They say that in that report. And in the case of Russia, you have just to listen to the, you know, to the military leaders in these countries. For example, Ibrahim Matra, when he came to power, he said, we wanted to fight the jihadists, but we had no weapons because the previous regimes were so corrupt and I mean, so subjected, you know, to, uh, I mean, French occupations that, you know, they didn't build any army at all. So they didn't, they didn't have weapons to fight jihadists. So Captain Pry was obliged to go to neighboring and say, could you lend us some weapons for us to fight? And when they asked the West, could you provide weapons? We want to buy weapons from you. The West said, no, we won't let you have weapons to fight jihadists. And they had to turn to Russia for that. And if you read uh, uh, the reports, recent report by the Stockholm Institute, P International Peace Research Institute, a report called Trends in Armed Transfer, you will see that the, the West has been reluctant to sell weapons to these countries. So these countries will turn to the Russia, to other countries of the global South to say, well, let's try to cooperate. Because obviously the goal of the West in the cell is not to fight terrorism, but to colonize us, you see. So it's not the same relationships at all, at all. But mm. and even if you look at independent, you know, opinion surveys, you will see that in the case of Mali, the Malian people have been very, you know, supportive of the relationship between Mali and Russia because I mean these people are exposed on a daily basis to jihadist attacks, and French to the support they could get from Russia and other countries. Their military grew stronger and they have been able to provide more security for them. And this is something really important for, because it's a matter of daily survival. Indeed, indeed. And I think, yes, the, I mean, you mentioned Mitterrand's comment. I mean, this is this is an ongoing story. I, in 2008, I think it was uh, uh, pre uh, President Jacques Chirac um, who said, without Africa, France will slide down to the rank of a third world power. Um, and this perspective was reaffirmed in a 2013 French Senate report, Africa is our future. So it very much appears that the, the French, <clears throat> whatever um, the uh, uh, Africans themselves want um, and desire, uh, the French believe that they know better always. And um, this is, of course, the, not a perspective that is um, uh, exclusive um, to, the, uh, to, uh, to the French. Um, the, the British feel the same way. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, it, it does seem that the, the Western ability to win hearts and minds in the, in the region um, has been reduced to almost zero. Um, and um, indeed, that they pushback against the kind of populist uh, military governments in in Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger um, has actually uh, just uh, pushed populations further in. Um, uh, uh, to, uh, sorry, uh, has engendered further support for um, these military governments. Do you see anywhere else um, in uh, within or without Francophone Africa uh, moves towards similar governance structures and away from Western in, um, domination and imperialism? Well, it it, it is difficult to say. Uh, I think it would be very difficult to have uh, military regimes, for example, progressive military regimes in non, you know, 
uh, Francophone countries ac across Africa because they have different histories. Because in Francophone yes. Africa, I mean, these countries have not been decolonized yet uh, in, a, in a formal sense because we never had independence. I mean, all the other countries, they had at, at least a formal independence, you know, process. But in our case, you know, in the 1960s, most of our leaders were trained in France and France told them, well, we are going to give you nominal independence in the sense that you will have your flag, your anthem, these kind of things. But in every sovereign domain, we will still continue to rule. And this was mm -hmm. called cooperation agreements. And this was signed by all these leaders at the time, except for people like Secretaries, you know, etc. Uh, but this has been the process, meaning that, well, uh, you, could not, you could not choose your own leaders in Francophone Africa. Your own leaders have to be chosen by France or have to do what France likes, etc. Otherwise, they could not stay in power. That's why in Central Africa, for example, you could see that people have been there for at least five decades. In Cameroon, you have Paul Bia. He's in power since 1982. He's, um, I mean, 91 years old. Uh, Denis Sassungeso have been in power, you know, for four decades, you know, all, all, the, all this kind of thing. So Francophone Africa is uh, really uh, special. But the thing is, you know, uh, they also, the people could also see that, you know, there is a kind of a double standard because obviously you have coups that are progressive and coups that are a way of reorganizing the neocolonial framework. In Chad, that's the case. Uh, in Gabon, that's the case. In Guinea, to some extent. And the uh, West have been so tolerant of these other coups because these other coups do not challenge, you know, Western domination, you know, in, 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 in Africa. But in the case of Mali, Burkina, Niger, they have been, I mean, waging, you know, uh, major propaganda against this regime. You know, every time, you know, you see, uh, you know, terrorist attacks, killing people in villages, I mean, this, this creates a sense of jubilation in Western media. You see, people mm. have been killed, but you see a sense of jubilation to say, oh, these are incompetent people. They should, you know, leave power. They could not fight against terrorism. And they, you see them jubilate. How could you jubilate when people are being killed by, by jihadist, you know, groups, etc.? But that, that, that's mm. the sensation you have. And people have been seeing that. And when you factor in, you know, what is happening in the world, in Ukraine, in Gaza, Lebanon, etc., and, you know, the, the West has lost any credi credibility, you know, any credibility. I mean, the, the media system, they could say, oh, the West, this, uh, the Western values, this kind of thing. But this is self-referential. This is their closed world. I mean, it's no longer working because most of the people, they know, I mean, uh, this is a fake world, but they are in this fake world. And the mm. people, you know, I mean, they want to change things. They want, you know, another world, but they, they, they will, I mean, struggle to, to, to liberate themselves from, you know, uh, imperial oppression. For sure, that's that's the tendency. Yeah, indeed, and I mean, I think I mean on that subject, um, I you know, I think that there is a growing interest um, in affairs um, in, in Africa among, among the uh, Western anti-imperialist uh, left, and I do want I wonder if you had any thoughts on how um, uh, uh, pe people uh, w w in in the West can help, not hinder um the uh the righteous struggle against imperialism um uh, across africa i mean um what, what what if anything can they do yeah in fact just telling the truth as you are try trying to do with active measures is really important to give uh okay. people access to other narratives because when people are talking about the return of coups extra coups are bad, et cetera, you know, democracy backsliding, uh, all of this is, is rubbish to, to some extent, because when you have, you know, I mean, uh, civilian people, I mean, uh, who came to power through rigged elections, et cetera, through killing their own populations, how could you say that these people are, you know, legitimate? Now, when you have uh, military leaders uh, who replace these people and who do try to do what the people want, I mean, this is a different story. And sometimes we have to, I mean, tell the stories with all the nuances. It's not, for example, when I wrote this article, it's not to say that, well, uh, I am for the military government or not, but just saying these are the facts and you have to take them in all their complexity, you know. Mm. Uh, so giving the right information and also, I mean, putting at the disposal of the larger people uh, different narratives, it's important. And also setting the context, because when it comes to Africa, 
it's always cliches. It's always cliches. And we, we have to, I mean, to, to give more objective, more nuanced accounts of what is happening in the continent. And that's really important. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Um, Ndongo, thank you very much for coming on Active Measures. Where can people find you? How can people follow you? How can they support your work? Well, I am on Twitter at uh, NSSYWLA. So, yeah, people could follow my work from there. Okay, and um, yeah, I mean, you you mentioned that you uh, you you, you uh, released released a book recently. Um, is that that's available for general sale? What's it called? It's a, a book uh, for now. It's in French. We are working uh, for an English translation. It is called La Democratie en France Afrique, in histoire de l'électoral. Uh, Democracy in French Africa, uh, story of electoral imperialism. And uh, before that, there's uh, there was uh, another book on the CFA franc. It's called uh, Africa's Last Colonial Currency. The CFA front story with Pluto Press. Superb. Well, I mean, if if they're they're even half as good as your as your recent paper, um, they're an apps they're absolute must reads. Um, no, again, thank you so much for your time. Um, we, we greatly appreciate your work. Um, take care and keep up the fight. Thank you very God much for the invitation and you as well. My pleasure.